This week on Top Golf Chef Showdown. I've never cooked a duck. I have no idea what I'm gonna do. Time is not my friend. <laughs> what a duck and move. <laughs> We're back with the competition that takes you behind the Top Golf menu. And we've got a recipe for drama like you've never seen before. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Take eight all new chefs, add a helping of hijinks on the tea line. Saga. And turn up the heat in our scorching kitchen combat. Ah! Hot, 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 hot. Time is not my friend. I'm Scott Conan. I think he did a lot of good stuff. Joined by Top Golf's Seve Delgado. I'm getting goosebumps oh, over yeah. here. And judges from the kitchen. It's delicious. The court and the golf course. We're pushing these chefs to the limit. You can do it! Woo! And sending our champion home with the ultimate win-win. Yes. <laughs> their dish on the Top Golf seasonal menu and a $5,000 donation to the charity of their choice. This is when the money is made. It's a very special. Can I switch it up a little bit? Spectacular season. Wow. Good stuff. Welcome to Top Golf Chef Showdown. So let's find out who's competing today. First up, we have Chef James Adamson from Top Golf Roseville, California. As a cook, I bring a really eclectic approach. I was born in Liverpool. My dad worked on offshore oil rigs. I grew up bouncing around all over the world. I've cooked and tasted many different varieties of food, so there's nothing that really scares me. I really want to get out there and show everyone what I've got. And then there's Randy Bennett from Top Golf, Glendale, Arizona. So I've been cooking for about half my life. As far as adversities that I've come across, I used to be over 400 pounds. But kind of one day it just snapped and I changed how I ate, how I acted. After having lost over 200 pounds, I can do anything I set my mind to. And here, I'm going to bring the same drive and ambition. So before these chefs get cooking, Sevi's gonna meet them at the tea line for their Top Golf Quick Challenge. The winner will score an advantage here in the kitchen. Hi, chefs. Hey, hey Sevi. Hope you guys are ready for your Top Golf Quick Challenge. Absolutely. As you can see, you've got some knives and a plethora of potatoes in front of you. We're gonna ask you to show off your knife skills. Whittle me this. I'm gonna give you five minutes to whittle me the best duck. We have to carve this duck out of potatoes. How am I going to do this? You can use as many potatoes as you need. Carving is not my forte. I'm pretty screwed. <laughs> when I start quacking, you start whittling. Quack, quack. I chop the bottom off of the sweet potato. It kind of resembles the duck. So I'm going with a Mr. Potato Head strategy. It's not on a stack. Two minutes, chefs. We're getting closer. 20 seconds, chefs. Oh, oh no! Three, two, one, knives down. I'm gonna check out Randy's duck first. Nice job. Thank you. You even got the duck face you know, going on here. Uh, I practiced that a little bit. Yeah. Chef James, you went a bit abstract on this one, Definitely. I believe. It's a bit of a Franken duck. Nice job. This is a very big decision to be made here. The chef that quacked me up with their duckiest duck is. Chef Randy. Yeah, away, man. That's Luckily, I was able to take the advantage. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm excited to see how it can help me. You ready? Yes, Chef. Let's get in there. <sighs> chefs. How's it going, Chefs? Hey. Nice hey. to see you. We are thrilled to have our guest judge today, golf phenom and fanatic foodie, Michelle Wee. Hi. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Yeah, thanks for Thank having you. me. I've watched her on TV a ton of times playing golf. I realize I've got to step my game up. Earlier, we had you carve a duck out of potatoes. That skill is gonna come in handy today. I'm thinking that we're probably gonna do something with potatoes. In our most spectacular challenge ever, Peking duck. Okay. Your challenge is to transform the duck and its traditional accompaniments of cucumbers, spring onion, bean curd sauce, and pancakes into a mouth-watering brunch dish. 
Randy, you won the quick challenge. At any time, you can sound this duck call, and your opponent has to duck out for one minute. Put that right there. This advantage would come in handy. Chefs, you have 30 minutes on the clock. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Get the duck out of here. <laughs> I love duck, right? The leg meat, I love uh, the breast, I love the skin. It's a perfect little animal. I think I love dark meat, and to me, mm -hmm. it feels like every part of the duck yes. is dark meat. And if done correctly, it's just sucking. Mm. Yes. I've never cooked duck, I've never touched a duck, I've never tasted duck, and I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I find the duck breast and, and start to butcher that out. Duck I've cooked with before, but I've never cooked with Peking duck, being that it's a pre-cooked duck. So I'm feeling a little anxious. I'm thinking some sort of Benedict. My version of a Benedict will have a mix of a duck hash, if you will. I figure it will be a good way to incorporate all the elements of the dish onto a plate. Come on. Any advice for the chefs having competed so much? I would just say don't fret. Space it out what you want to do. And just not move too fast. When you like hurry, that's when you make mistakes. Chefs, you are under 20 minutes. It's going to go fast, guys. The plan for the vegetables that I've chopped up is just to mix it all together with the duck. With the spring onions and cucumbers, just dice that up and incorporate it into the hash. So the ideas that come into my head are, maybe I want to try and keep it a little more on the healthy side. So today I'm making a duck brunch salad. All right, chef, what are you building? A bed of lettuce, then layer the duck on top of it, uh -huh. mix vegetables, yeah. to then give it some freshness, egg on top. You got a lot of stuff going on, man. You gonna cool. make it? I plan on it. Chef, what do we got here? All Talk right, to so me. So we got the garlic, the onions, the carrots. I'm gonna sweat that down, add the chopped duck meat. All right. Kind of just turn that into a, a base of the filling. Okay. After that, toast some bread, poach an egg or two, make the hollandaise sauce, pour it all over the top, and then finish it with the asparagus, the shaped stuff over there, and some, something else. That Is I that it? Figured out That's yet. all you got going on? That's it. <laughs> I've got a lot to do, and it's not a lot of time. <laughs> So that bean curd sauce, it is such a distinctive flavor. What do you do with something like that? I don't know, I just hope they don't overuse it. You know, it can get salty very fast. It's very potent. It hits me right in my face. Maybe I should just use this as a dressing. I add a little bit of apple cider vinegar, some olive oil, and try and whisk it together. I'm just trying to have a balance between that and some acidity. There's gonna be duck, super fatty. That's about right. Ooh, something's going on there, the fruit processor. Just making a hollandaise, quick style. With the bean curd sauce, I just want to add that to the hollandaise sauce and kind of elevate that. Time is not my friend, but it's okay. We'll get it done. So there's only a little bit of time left, and I haven't done anything with my duck, so I decided to start warming it up on the flat top and get a good sear on it. Hopefully that'll bring out some of the flavor. So when I watch competition, I get really nervous, more so than being in competition. There's like nothing I can do. Yeah. They both have a lot going on. You have to allow at least three minutes to play. That's like your rule of thumb, because the presentation is one of the most important elements yeah. of this as well. I decided to do a simple fried egg, keep it nice and yolky, so you have a little bit of the yolk spilling all over. Don't break. Six minutes and 20 seconds, chefs. Six minutes and 20 seconds. As time's winding down, I realize that I still need to poach the eggs. And then I hear the duck call <laughs> and realize I have to stop cooking everything. Oh! oh. In the oh. face! Oh. The timing couldn't have been better. What a ducking move. <laughs> That's, as that minute passes by, I'm watching Randy continue cooking and realizing that I'm running out of time. James, do you have your eggs down already? Nope, but that's probably a mistake. Hopefully that water's ripping hot and boiling away hard. James, you're back in. I have four minutes left, so I think it's enough time to finish the dish, but it's gonna be close. James is sweating <laughs> profusely. <laughs> This is probably 10 times faster than I'm used to working. I have faith in you. You can do it. So I still have to do something with these pancakes. 
and I want to still have the option for it to be healthy. I just kind of chop them up, throw them in the fryer, and leave them a little bit off to the side so that if you want to eat them, you can, and if you don't, you can just push them away. So I still need to integrate the pancake into the dish, so my plan is to just fry it very quickly and add it as a crunchy element over the top. Two minutes and 50 seconds, chefs. Get it all on the plate. So I check on my duck, and it seems nice and warm. It has a good sear on both sides. So I kind of just try and pile it in the back corner and layer everything against it. Hopefully, the judges will be pleased with the presentation. Not there. Just waiting for the eggs to cook. Literally, it's going to be egg sauce finished. One minute and 45 seconds. What do you need, man? Not much. Just your love. Oh, I'm here for you. Wow. 30 seconds. The last few seconds, I decide on using chopped asparagus to bring in some lemon to lighten up the dish. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up. Good oh, job, chef. Good job. Five, yeah. Chefs, we asked you to create a brunch dish utilizing Peking duck and its traditional accompaniments. Chef James, what'd you make for us? I made for you a Benedict with bean curd hollandaise sauce, a duck hash, and then lemon asparagus on the top. You were running low on time there, that, that duck call. You think that hurt you a little bit? I think at the end there, I could have used that extra minute to get a more composed plate to put together. I like that you took a breakfast hash and a Benedict and fused those two together. The veggies really add a nice touch, but James, the bean sauce, I don't taste it. You definitely could have incorporated more of that, maybe into the hash. Yeah. I really like the runny yolk and the hash part is incredible. You know, it's yeah. a different flavor. Like I had carnitas hash and all sorts of hash, never duck hash, and I thought it was a perfect Sunday brunch food. Thank you very much. I think you did a lot of good stuff. You ended up kind of stumbling your way into success with the egg, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but if you look at the plates in front of us, all of us, we took that asparagus and kind of pushed it off to the side. If you just take that step back, less equates to more right. because you're losing the direction of what this dish is intended to be. Right. But you created great flavor. You did get your egg done right. Good job. Thank you. Chef Randy, what'd you make for us? I did a seared duck and seared vegetables on field greens with some bean curd vinaigrette. Did the egg over easy. And then you took the pancakes and just deep fried them? Just deep fried them. What made you go with duck salad? Something a little bit lighter that you cannot feel so guilty about. Okay. Good combination of flavors together. I'm thrown off by this. You could have taken your fried pancake yeah, and pulverized it like crouton dust, getting the crunch in each bite. Yeah, I love this fried pancake. It was slightly confusing, but I thought the duck tasted phenomenal. The vinaigrette, huge fan. You know, it's surprising because it looks like a balsamic vinaigrette. But when you taste it, you definitely taste the bean curd as well. Thank you. I love that vinaigrette. I think it's genius. My biggest issue with this is your presentation. It's a little too compartmentalized. I think you very easily could have cut that duck off with the salad, with the vegetables all on the bottom of the plate, with these pancakes mm -hmm. that are deep fried throughout, and then the egg sitting on top of it. I don't think it's what you created. I think it's how you assembled it. But all in all, your flavors are tight. Thank you, Chef. Chefs, both of you today, really solid dishes, and we got some talking to do. We do. Thank you. How are you feeling? It's drained. You know, it's putting it all out there. I don't know what to think. I don't either. Peking duck. We end up with two very different approaches, mm -hmm. and I think both of these chefs really created amazing flavors. But it's really hard to see that when the presentations are a little muddled. I thought James's hash was incredible. That Randy's bean curd vinaigrette was mm. so unique, so different, so unexpected. 
At Top Golf, we try to venture outside of the box a little bit. So we want to look at what is that edgy dish. It sounds to me that one chef edges the other one out. That's correct. So let's bring the chefs in. Great, let's do it. Welcome back, chefs. Thank you so much for all your hard work. That was a cliffhanger. I thoroughly enjoyed both of your dishes. It was a great meal. Obviously, we had to make a decision, and there was one dish that we think edged out the other. The chef who will be moving on to the finals is... Chef Randy. Good job. Great job. I feel pretty amazing. I think the one thing that gave me the edge was maybe that I didn't have any experience with duck. I just wanted to try something different. I think what ended up giving Randy the win was his dressing. It was obviously delicious. I want to see him take the whole thing. If to lose to the winner, is better than to lose to someone that doesn't win. Randy has won his spot in the finals, but there are still three spots left to fill. Going into the finals, I hope everyone's ready and that they know that this isn't a one-trick pony. There's going to be more to come. I hope you're loving the cooking competitions. I hope you're loving the guest judges that we have. Like and follow our page. Check out who brings home that big win. It's a lot of fun.